guys, I'm back with the sixth video of the video series on how do organisms reproduce class 10th science. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the human reproductive system, where we will specifically talk about the male reproductive system in today's video. So just be with me because these are some important topics from your exam perspective as well. Let's get started. So let us talk about the sexual reproduction in human beings. So here sexual reproduction is the only mode of reproduction. Unlike plants where we saw that they reproduce both sexually as well as asexually. But in case of human beings, the only mode of reproduction is sexual mode. Right? So therefore in human beings, we distinctly talk about the two different sexes that is male and female are completely different. They have got different types of reproductive organs so that they can generate the female germ cell and the male germ cell separately. So we will talk about the male reproductive organs and the female reproductive organs separately and how do each of them produce the sex cells. We will also talk about that. Now before that, one interesting one interesting thing to know is that the reproductive organs in both male and female, they do not start functioning from the time a human being takes birth. They start functioning only after a certain age. For example, a small baby is born. So all his body is made up of all types of cells, but the cells which are specialized for reproduction, they will become active or they will start working only after a certain age. And that age is known as puberty or adolescence. So we will first discuss about puberty and adolescence and then we will see that how the different reproductive organs work together to make sexual reproduction. So let us have a look at puberty. What do we mean by puberty? When does it come and how do we know that a, a person has arrived in this age? Now, let us suppose, imagine a kid or let us talk about any one of us. You would have seen that when a baby is born, it is very small. Now, gradually it starts growing. So, you can see the changes in a baby very evidently, right? A baby who is six months old, he will not be able to sit on his own, he will not be able to stand on his own. But if you observe the same baby after six months, when it is one year old, you will see that it will be able to sit, it will also be able to stand. Again, after another six months, it will be able to walk, its height will also increase, its weight will increase. So you can feel the change in a baby very evidently because the growth is maximum in that age. So when you are a kid, your height increases, your weight increases, so your energy and energy in your body also increases. So all these changes keep taking place inside our body. Now, you would have observed that at a certain age, when you reach a certain age, which we generally call as teenage, you observe some other kind of changes in your body as well. For example, in case of guys, you would have seen that your voice changes. The way you were speaking when you were a kid is different than the way you speak now. So your voice becomes a little more rough and a little more hoarse. Similarly, uh, you would also see that there are some other kind of changes in your body physically as well. For example, you would observe growth of hair in your underarms. You will observe growth of hair on your face, which will gradually turn into beards and moustaches. Right? So these are some of the changes which you would have not observed in the first 10 or 12 or 13 years of your life. Those days you were just growing, your height was increasing, your weight was increasing, so those were the changes. But now you are observing some different types of changes. So when these kind of changes take place, you say that the guy is becoming young or he is entering youth. We call that age as adolescence, that means something which is between uh, the childhood and adult. So that is called adult, adolescence, that means the, the child is going to be an adult now. So that is the teenage basically. So similar changes are observed. I mean, not similar, but these kind of changes are also observed in case of girls also. But the changes are little different. So now, why is it that 
why are we why do we say that these kind of changes are related to the reproductive system why are we saying that now in the beginning of the lesson i told you that reproduction is something which is not necessary for us to be alive right so when a baby is born reproduction is not a priority in his life because even if reproduction doesn't happen he is alive he is healthy his life is going smooth right so reproduction is not the priority what is priority the growth of the baby is priority so all the energy that his body receives through the food which the baby eats is spent up in the growth of the body now when the body has grown considerably for the first 13 or 14 years now the body says that okay fine i am grown enough i am strong enough to handle things now so now the second priority comes of reproduction because we also know the importance of reproduction if there is no reproduction there will be no species left on earth so reproduction is also necessary so then some of the energy starts getting spent on functioning of the reproductive organs and that is called puberty when you observe all these changes let us look at an example suppose when you were a child study was your priority when you were going to school study was your priority so you were spent you were spending all your energy in studying so that you can score well so that you can clear all your competitive exams so study was your priority but once you clear your competitive exams you get through a good college then study is not your only priority now you start using some of your time for in improving your looks in having some fun activities for your recreation for roaming around right so that means with the passage of time the priority changed so similarly in case of human body when a baby is born the priority is growth therefore all the energy is spent in the growth of the body but at a certain age the, there is considerable growth in the human body after that the energy is spent in making the reproductive organs active and that age is known as puberty so now we will see what are those changes which actually happen at this age so period during which the rate of general body growth slows down and the reproductive tissues starts maturing so at this stage the general growth becomes the second priority and reproductive tissues becomes the first priority so that age is known as puberty so you would have seen the difference for yourself when a, a small girl child the appearance of the small girl child and the appearance of a teenage girl don't you see any difference in their body structure there are enlargement of breasts the body structure also becomes little different so these are the changes which happen at a certain age right so when all these changes happen we see that the reproductive tissues have started maturing and this age is known as adolescence that is the person is going to become an adult so for a human male he reaches puberty at the age of 13 to 14 years now it varies from person to person some people reaches puberty by around 13 some reaches around 16 so it varies but it is somewhere in this range whereas a female reaches the same around 11 to 13 years so a human female reaches this adolescence a little earlier than the human male right so when you reach puberty your body actually starts telling that now the reproductive tissues have started functioning so now the body is capable of reproduction so as long as a human being doesn't reach adolescence he is not capable of reproduction he cannot give birth to a new organism right so this is known as puberty so it happens both in male and female and just by looking at the appearance of uh, a person you can say whether he has reached puberty or not there are not only differences in physical appearance there are also some differences in the internal organs as well So let us look at some of the changes which are observed during puberty in a male as well as in a female. So let us look at some of the changes which are observed during this age. In case of males, you would have seen that there are thick hair growth under armpits and the genital area at this age. Facial hair, which later develop into initially there will be some few hairs appearing on face, and then gradually they will. form thick and denser and they will form the shape of a mustache or beard change in voice as i said the voice becomes a little more heavy and hoarse 
occasional penis enlargement. So the penis gets enlarged at certain times. Similarly, in case of females, some noticeable changes are the start of menstruation cycle. Now, what is this menstruation cycle that we will discuss in detail in one of the later slides? But menstruation cycle is nothing but the periods which happen periodically. That means every month, the female undergoes a period where there is bleeding from her vagina and it lasts for some three to five days. So this men's situation, which is often termed as men's or periods by many females. So this starts at this age where every month they have a bleeding of three to five days. The breast enlargement, which is again another noticeable change. Hair growth under armpits and genital area. So these are some of the changes which are observed in a male and a female at adolescence. Now, when these changes start taking place, the body actually tells that it is now ready for reproduction. Right? So now we will see what actually happens in sexual reproduction. How are the male sex cells and the female sex cells produced inside the human body? So let us first talk about the human male reproductive system. So as I said, in case of human beings, the reproductive system for male and female structure wise, they are totally different. They have got completely different structures. So let us first talk about the structure of the human male reproductive system. So here is a picture which shows the reproductive system in male. So this is a side view. So let us look at the different structures here. We have testis. So testis forms the main organ in the male reproductive system. So this is the testis. Then the next one is vas deferens. Vas deferens is this tube-like structure which you see here. So this is the vas deferens. Next is scrotum. Scrotum is this the structure which actually contains testis. So here you can see that there is this pouch-like structure which actually holds the testis. So this pouch-like structure is the scrotum. And testis are those organs which produce the male sex cells. As I said, the male germ cells or the male gametes. So the testis is the actual area where the male gametes are produced. Now, testis occurs in pairs in human, be human males. There are two testis, one on this side. As I said, this is the side view. So, one is on this side and the other one is on the other side. Vas difference is a tube which is connected to the testis. Then is urethra. Urethra is this tube. So, if you see this vas difference tube, this travels from here and then it joins with this tube. What is this? The organ, this is the urinary bladder. We have spoken about the urinary bladder in the excretory system. So from urinary bladder there is a tube called urethra through which the urine passes outside. Right. So this tube vast difference also joins with this urethra here. So at this point you see this is urethra from urinary bladder and this is vast difference. So vast difference joins with urethra and they become one tube. Then there is epididymis. Epididymis is the structure which is present near the testis. This is called epididymis. So if you see from the testis, initially it is a thicker coiled tube-like structure. So it basically consists of coiled tube inside the structure. So this is epididymis and from the lower part of the epididymis starts this thin tube-like structure which is called vast difference. And then the pens. So this structure which you see here, the external structure, this is the penis. So roughly these are the main structures which form the human male reproductive system. Now other than these, there are certain glands which are also involved, which also perform a role in the male reproductive system. So what are these glands? The prostrate gland. So here you can see this is the prostrate gland. There are seminal vesicles. This is the seminal vesicle.
and the cowper's gland. So this is the cowper's gland. So these are the three glands which also play a role in the reproductive system of male. Now what are their functions that we will discuss in the next slide. So for now you got an understanding of the structure of human male reproductive system. So these are the main organs which together form the reproductive system in male. So let us try to understand the function of each and every part of this system. So let us start with testes which is the most important organ or which plays the most vital role in the reproductive system because they are the ones who will actually produce the male sex cells and for sexual reproduction you need a male sex cell and a female sex cell which will fuse together to form the new organism. So testis produces the male sex cells. Now as I said before also testis occur in pairs. They produce sperms. What are sperms? Sperms are nothing but the male sex cells or the male germ cells or the male gametes. So sperm is the name for the male sex cells. So testis produce sperms. It also produces uh, the male hormone called testosterone. Are you familiar with the name testosterone? While we were talking about the endocrine system, we were talking about the different glands in the body, you remember? So there we talked about testis also. The testis produces this hormone which is responsible for growth and development of all the primary and sec secondary sexual characters in male. Just now I told, right, the enlargement of the penis or the development of hair on the underarms and in the genital area or the development of facial hair. These are some of the secondary sexual characters. Now these characters develop because of this hormone, testosterone. So this hormone is also produced by testis. Now testis occur in pairs, that means there are two testis present in a human male, one on each side of the penis. Right? Now this testis, so from where actually the sperms are produced, what, what is there inside the testis that produces the sperms? Actually testis consists of many coiled tube-like structures which are lined by cells of epithelium. We, we have already spoken about tissues right in class 9. So we saw that there is a characteristic of epithelial tissue that they can be secreted in nature, they can secrete things. So these coiled tubules which form the testis, they are lined by cells of epithelium which divide and form the sperms. So that means the testis are made of these kind of coiled tubules and these tubules are lined with epithelium. Those epithelium will divide to form the sperms. So that is how sperms are produced inside the testis. Right? So let us look at the next part that is scrotum. So scrotum is nothing but an extension of abdominal cavity containing the testis. So just to carry testis, this scrotum is present. Its purpose is only to hold the testis. Now the question is, why do we need an organ separately outside the abdomen to hold the testis? Why can't the testis be present inside the abdomen itself? Why do we need an organ separately for holding the testis? That's because in the, inside the testis, sperms are produced. Now in order to, for the production of sperms, the temperature that is needed is lower than the body temperature. Now, if, if the testis would have been present inside the abdomen, the temperature would be the same as the body temperature. Now, high temperature is not at all suitable for production of sperms. So, production of sperms needs a lower temperature. And in order to maintain a temperature lower than the body temperature, an external cavity is made outside the body. That is why the scrotum forms an external cavity outside the abdominal cavity just to hold the testis. So, that the appropriate lower temperature can be maintained inside the testis and sperms can be produced there. And also it protects the testis because any covering will definitely protect the organs which are present inside it. So scrotum serves two functions. One is it protects the testis. Second is it maintains a temperature lower than the body temperature which is suitable for the production of sperms. Third is epididymis. Which, is a, what, which structure was epididymis? If you look at the picture, this, this is the testis. So this is testis 
and this structure is epididymis. Right? So it is a complex tube-like structure in scrotum. So and this everything lies inside the scrotum. This U-shaped structure is the scrotum. So it is a complex tube-like structure. So here it is looking as a simple tube-like structure, but actually it is made up of coiled tubules like this. So it is a coiled tube-like structure. It stores sperms, helps in passage of sperms. Now the sperms are produced inside the testes. Now these sperms will be passed to the epididymis and the epididymis will actually store the sperms. So it actually helps in the passage of sperms from testis to the outside. Right? So now here also as I mentioned in one of the previous slides that the sperm that is the male germ cell is motile. That means it is capable of moving. But the female germ cell which is the egg cell that is not motile, that is not capable of moving much. So now, in order that the fusion takes place between the male sex cell and the female sex cell, who will have to travel? The male sex cell will have to travel, that means the sperm will have to travel. So that is what will happen. The sperm is being produced in the testis. Here, the sperm is getting produced. But the sperm will have to travel from testis till the place where the female sex cell is there. Right? So basically the sperm will have to come out of the body of the human male and it will have to enter the body of the human female. So this, this transfer actually happens when two people have sex. That is the transfer of sperms from the male body to the female body. That is what that actually happens. So this epididymis is the first step from, through which the sperms passes out of the testis. The next one is vast difference that is this tube like structure this is the vast difference it is a tube like structure emerging from lower part of epididymis it opens to the ejaculatory duct so this is the tube which actually helps in carrying the sperm so if you look at this tube it goes and it opens to the ejaculatory duct ejaculatory means ejaculatory word comes from the term ejaculation that means giving out something so there is a duct. This duct is known as ejaculatory duct. So I will talk about the ejaculatory duct in detail. So it actually is the tube which will go, which will keep on going and it will connect to the urethra and the urethra will open to the outside. Right? So the vas difference is the tube which actually carry the sperm from the testis to the outside. Next is penis. So penis is a muscular copulatory organ. So it is a muscular organ made up of muscles. Copulatory organ. What do you mean by copulatory organ? That means the organ with which two bodies or two organisms get connected. As I said, in order that fusion between the sperm and the female sex cell takes place, it is necessary that sperm reaches the female sex cell. For that, the sperm will have to travel from the body of the human male to the body of the female. So that transfer will take place through an organ and that organ is called penis. So penis will actually connect the body of a human male to the body of a human female. And through this penis, the sperms will get transferred from the body of the male to the body of the female. So penis is a copulatory organ that means an organ which helps in copulation which helps in uh, helps two organisms in mating that is called a copulatory organ which which joins two objects which couples two things that is called a copulatory organ so what is the main function of the penis it discharges the sperms when stimulated now normally the penis is not activated normally it is like um, a loose structure but actually it is made up of some loose muscles so when the penis gets stimulated the tissues of the penis get filled with blood now when all the tissues inside the penis gets filled with blood the penis becomes erect and firm now when it becomes firm and erect what happens the sperm which is present inside the penis that means the sperm which is present inside the urethra it gets ejaculated so that is the main function of the penis. Now if you look at the diagram here, you can see it even more clearly. So this is the penis. This is the penis. Now when it becomes firm and erect, 
then the sperms which are present in this tube you retra it will be ejected out right so that's the main function of the penis next is urethra what is urethra it is the tube like structure it is a common passage for both sperms and urine actually it originates from the urinary bladder so if you see this is the urethra this tube this urethra so it originates from urinary bladder and it passes through the penis and it opens to the outside right so this will carry urine which is coming from urinary bladder and it will also carry sperms which is coming from the vas deferens here so these are some of the organs of the reproductive system other than that i talked about some glands so let us look at their purpose prostate gland this is the prostate gland what does it do it secretes a milky fluid that helps in sperms mobility now the sperms which gets produced now let us suppose so many sperms get produced here now these sperms will have to move so they should be mobile now in order to increase the mobility of the sperm the prostate gland secretes a milky fluid a fluid which is milky in color now when you have some fluid along with the sperm this fluid will actually helps in the actually help in the movement now when as the fluid flows it will carry the sperm along with it so it helps in the movement of the sperm along the tubes next is the seminal vesicles what does they do they produce a viscous fluid which help in sperm mobility in female now even after the sperm has been transferred to the female body even inside the female body it has to move a distance to reach the egg to reach the female sex cell so this viscous fluid which is secreted by the seminal vesicles it helps in the movement of the sperm in the female body now in the female body generally uh, as soon as now right now i have not spoken about the female reproductive part but as soon as the sperm enter the female body the medium there is generally acidic so the sperm enter into an acidic medium as soon as it enters the female body but for the sperm to be alive they need an alkaline medium so these fluid which is secreted by the uh, seminal vesicles they actually help in keeping the medium alkaline so that the sperm can remain alive even inside the female body at least till the time it meets the female germ cell because if the sperm dies before it meets the uh, female germ cell then fertilization will not take place right so seminal vesicles will secrete a fluid which will help in keeping the sperm alive inside the female body and it will also help in movement of the sperm inside the body of the female this viscous fluid will also help in the contraction of the mus in, in the contraction of the uterine muscles that means the muscles of the female body so therefore the sperm will be able to move forward and the last one is the cowper's gland what will this do it will secrete mucus to lubricate the female passage now as i said during the mating what happens is the penis is inserted inside the female reproductive organ now when i speak about when i discuss about the female reproductive system we will talk about an organ called the vagina which is the first opening of the female's body so now this penis is inserted inside the vagina and then the penis will secrete the uh, sperm inside the female body so now in order that the penis is able to insert itself inside the vagina it is very very important that the passage of the vagina vagina is well lubricated so that the penis can get inside it so for that lubrication a mucus is secreted by the cowper's gland so this mucus will lubricate the passage of the vagina so that the penis can easily get inside the vagina and secrete the sperm inside the female body right so i hope the um, structure of the different parts of the reproductive system in male is clear and you have also understood the purpose of each of them okay so now the question is how are sperms produced so now we have understood the different parts of the reproductive system and what do each of them do so now let us see how are these sperms produced because they are the they are the hero in this movie because they are needed for reproduction the male sex cells so how are they actually produced let us now see how are the sperms produced so sperms are the male sex cells so let us see how are they actually produced so in the previous slide we already discussed that 
testes are the organs where the sperms are produced so here we will see the entire flow of sperms through the body of a human male so sperms are produced in testes so this is how they actually look like they have got a head and a tail like structure so here you can see this is how they look like with a tail like structure which helps them in moving so from the testes these sperms move to the epididymis so as i said the testes are made up of coil tubules and these tubules are lined by epithelium so these epithelium divides to form the sperms now you will be surprised to know that almost around 12 billion sperms per month are produced so that's a large number right so there are so many sperms which actually get produced every month so now once these sperms are produced they move from the testes to the epididymis so what is epididymis the coiled structure which is just connected to the testes so epididymis stores the sperms and the sperms get matured there so when the sperms are being stored in the epididymis meanwhile they get matured now before the intercourse when actually the mating takes place between a male and a female so just before that is known as intercourse so just before that intercourse what happens the penis gets stimulated so the penis fills with blood it becomes hard and erect so now and under this situation the mature sperms from the epididymis moves to the vas deferens so vas deferens is the tube which is going to carry the sperm so when the penis becomes stimulated and erect then the sperm starts moving from the epididymis to the vas deferens now this vas deferens will carry the sperm in the tube and then seminal vesic seminal vesicles these glands will pour their secretion into the vas deferens so there will be a duct which will coming out which will be coming out from the seminal vesicle so this what what will seminal vesicle secrete seminal vesicle will secrete a viscous fluid which will help in the movement of the sperm inside the female body right now this duct of the seminal vesicle will combine with the duct of the vas deferens and they will together form the ejaculatory duct so the tube which is vas deferens will get connected with a tube from seminal vesicle they both will join together to form ejaculatory duct now this ejaculatory duct will then pass through the prostate gland wherein the prostate gland will also give its secretion the milky fluid secretion which will help the uh, sperms to move and from there it will go to the urethra so this ejaculatory duct will join the urethra and through urethra it will finally get ejaculated now another surprising fact to note here is that as i said there are almost 12 billion sperm which gets produced per month now of so many millions of sperms which get ejaculated only around 200 to 250 of them survive to reach the egg cell that means by the time they move from the male body to the female body many of the sperms die because of the change in medium some of them die while passing through the female body so at the end only some 200 to 300 are able to reach near the egg cell and only one finally becomes successful to fertilize the egg that means fusion finally happens between one sperm and one egg so just imagine so many sperms got produced but at the end only one sperm is successfully able to fertilize the egg so let us look at this flow once again in the human body so as i discussed the sperms are produced in the testes so here you can see the sperms which are getting produced so from testes they will move to the epididymis so this is epididymis that is the coil tubule structure here the sperms will get stored and they will become mature here so from this epididymis they move to the vas deferens that is the tube like structure which will carry the sperm from vas deferens it will travel till it reaches the seminal vesicle so this is the seminal vesicle so you can see a small duct from the seminal vesicle this duct will carry the secretions of the seminal vesicle and it will join the vas deferens so after this duct joins the vas deferens it forms ejaculatory duct so this is the ejaculatory duct then this ejaculatory duct passes through the prostate so the prostate here is the prostate prostate will also pour its secretion 
and then it will join the urethra so here you can see it was the urethra so prostate pore is secretion urethra also came in so it joined the urethra and through this urethra finally the sperms will get ejaculated so where will the sperms get ejaculated now during the intercourse the penis is inserted inside the vagina of the female body so now when the sperms are ejaculated they are actually ejaculated inside the female body so this is how sperms are produced and they are put inside the female body clear so now that we have spoken so much about a sperm let us look at the structure of a sperm how does a sperm look like sperms are very very tiny bodies with a long tail the main purpose of sperm is to move from one place to another because if you see in sexual reproduction it is mainly the male germ cell which is motile which has to move from their area of production to the area where the egg cell is located so these are tiny bodies with long tail so here you can roughly see the structure they are mainly composed of genetic material so sperms contain mostly genetic material so in any cell where is the genetic material concentrated the genetic material is contained in the nucleus right inside the nucleus we have uh, the chromosomes and inside the chromosomes we have the genes so the genetic material is present inside the nucleus now if you look at the sperm this upper portion constitute this is the head of the sperm this portion is the middle piece and this is the tail so if you look at the head of the sperm most portion of the head is occupied by the nucleus so the sperms have a real big nucleus that's because that is why it is said that sperms contain mostly genetic material so the nucleus com com comprises of a good portion of the sperm and this outside membrane is the cell membrane and this is the neck of the sperm so more or less this is how the structure of a sperm look like i hope you found this entire series on reproduction or how do organisms reproduce useful if you have a feedback to share do let us know in the comment section if you really like the video you should share it with your friends so that they can enjoy the video too. I will see you all very soon with a new video with a new topic. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.